Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam and glad you stopped by to hang out for a little bit. So today we have the finished product. So got the chassis built. You guys have seen that. Um, absolutely gorgeous build. And now we finally got the body on it and the wheels and tires are glued and well back tires are glued. I didn't glue the fronts. So I was able to get the tire riding done mostly on the tires. Um, as you can tell on the back tires we did the big letters and the small lettering. The fronts, the small lettering is so tiny. Um, yeah, I just didn't want to. It was a pain in the butt. Um, this thing is my worst enemy. <laughs> I've, I've come to find out I don't like riding on tires. While it looks cool, it is just so tedious. Um, I've got to come up with a better way. Uh, I tried two or three different ways and, and every one of them had difficulties. So I've either got to come up with a different pen or a different way or something. So if you guys have any tips or videos um, that you guys have done uh, showing how to do that a little bit better, you know, drop down in the description or, you know, something. I need help because tire riding to me is not fun. The cool thing is when they're spinning, you can't tell anyway, so it looks just as cool as the, the back. Um, anyway, as you can tell, we did not go box art uh, with this guy. Uh, I don't have anything against this. I think this looks really, really good. I just felt like this kit needed to be, you know, to me, I wanted this kit to be a, a remembrance of seeing the, the top end race cars in magazines. And, you know, back in these days, they didn't have too many of the crazy flame paint jobs or the super drippy paint jobs. You know, this era was still, you know, classic lines and, and racing stripes and stuff like that. For the most part, that's what they were. I mean, of course, you had really, really high-end guys who were, were doing super, super custom jobs. But for this, I mean, I think with the metal flake in here and the, the pinstripes and just the layout of it, I think it just looks like, you know, that is 1980s, you know, race car right there. So I'm super stoked with it. I'll put a picture montage up here while I keep rambling for a minute. Uh, but overall, uh, the body was pretty easy. Uh, messing with these stripes was a little bit of a pain in the butt just because of trying to get the stuff to lay down and, and get into all the little nooks and crannies. And there's some, some slight, you know, imperfections with it um it's certainly not perfect but i'm happy with it so you know really that's that's what matters so uh, there's some there's still some imperfections in the in the paint um you know all the stripes are painted on and i just added the extra decals uh once i got done with the paint so there's some minor imperfections so that's cool with me I, i'm not a, a world master class painter by any means but you know i think overall it's stunning and, you know, that metal flake and, you know, all the silver and stuff on here just goes hand in hand. Now, the paint I used for this was TS-15 Metallic Red. So this has some metal flake in it. So it has that metallic sheen to it. But um, I used the Lame Flake uh, PS-53 to give it more pop. Uh, so obviously out of the sun, it really pops with a lot of uh, coloring. So... Two reasons I wanted to use this was, one, this will help prevent bleed. So a lot of places on this paint job, you know, where those stripes are, it was basically one piece of tape with another overlapping piece of tape. And everybody knows when you have two pieces of tape crossing over, it just wants to wick um, paint right into those. So that was another reason of trying to go with some lame flake because it's, it's a clear paint. Uh, it just has the metal flake in there. So I was hoping to try to seal some of those and it did a pretty good job of helping that with that. So sealing it with this kind of helped keep that red from bleeding up underneath um, in a lot of places. Now in some places that really um, lightweight vinyl uh, masking tape from Tamiya, um, if it just dead ends, so if you just have the strip of tape and you cut it off square like on these rooftop pieces, um, it, for some reason, just has this natural want to curl up. It draws itself up. Um, so a lot of times when I'm using that tape, I will, like, when I ran the stripes down here, I'll actually run the stripe down and fold it over the body to keep it from peeling up. But right here on top, where those stripes end, they were just cut off square. 
uh, as well as here. But for some reason, these both wanted to peel up uh, when the tape got soft, when the paint was on there. I don't know whether it's just because the paint stayed wet up here, because obviously it's sitting like that because it's drying. I don't know. I'm not a molecular, molecular scientist or anything. I just know that, that it gets soft when you paint it, and it tends to bunch up. Um, the silver stripes are PS12, and the black is actually the Tra Traxxas Pro Graphics paint. Um, if you guys haven't tried this, uh, especially for black, this stuff dries insanely fast. I mean, you don't need a heat gun, you don't need anything. Just hold it up against a fan or something for 30 seconds, and you're almost ready for a next coat. I don't know what chemical magic is in here that probably causes cancer, but it is freaking fantastic if you were trying to rush through something. So, you know, all the coats of this stuff took, you know, hours. Uh, two or three coats of this stuff took, you know, 15 minutes. <laughs> so, really nice to, you know, finish the job off with that. All right, guys. So, the only thing I did different from the setup on here from the instructions is I did put a little bit more preload on the back and the front shocks. So technically the front shocks come all the way up flush to basically where the shock cap kind of leans up. And in the back it's supposed to have like three to four mil of uh, space down. And here I probably got about 10, 11, maybe 12-ish um, of preload on it. Just because when I put the battery in and you drop test it, you know that that rear end was smacking the ground a little bit. Um, even with this, you know, if it, if it drops, you know, it wants to smack that ground. Which, you know, it's all metal back here, which, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. But, you know, I don't want it dragging its butt all over the, uh, the place when I'm driving either. And the front, you know, I think that's going to be plenty. But once you put the battery in this guy, there's some significant heft in there. So I did have to add a little bit more on the back end. Because your motor's here, you got all the weight of all those metal pieces, and then the battery sits right here. So it is definitely, you know, rear end centric of where that weight is. But, you know, you've seen it. Um, it's an absolute beauty to look at. Um, I'm, this, I'm, I'm scared to run it. I'll be honest with you. I don't want to scratch my baby. It's pretty. <laughs> but so I am going to take this out. We're going to get some running footage real, with it real quick. I am not going to run this on the gravel. Um, I've already s s sworn to myself a dozen times that this doesn't drive on gravel ever. Just because I don't want it to scar up the bottom of that. I know it's going to get scratches in it. That's cool. But I, I don't need giant gouges and nicks and dings and stuff in it from the gravel. And, you know, I've got plenty of other places to drive. All right, shut up, Adam. Okay, we're going to go drive. <laughs>
Well, all right, guys, that was the maiden run for the Kyosho Tomahawk. Um, this thing is planted. Um, now, I was able to roll it one time, but I think it actually kicked up um, one something and, you know, flipped it over. Otherwise, you know, it came up on two wheels maybe one other time. But this thing drives really, really nice. It stays really, really planted. Just like the Nova Fox, you know, if this guy gets traction, you know, it will wheelie. Not quite as much as the Nova Fox did, uh, but definitely pulled the front wheels up. Um, we get a lot of moss in our front yard. Um, you know, we live in the middle of woods. It doesn't get any sun, so grass doesn't grow. Moss grows really well. Uh, so when it was hooking up on that moss and could get traction, it would pull up. Uh, these tires, uh, phenomenal. Um, even though it spins, you know, it's still getting a lot of traction spinning. Um, and, and the other reason I don't like tire riding, uh, making the tires look all pretty is because as soon as you take them out, they get torn up. But um, ran it for a full battery, um, 3,600 milliamp uh, nickel metal hydride. So, you know, about 20 minutes almost. Um, and motor was just barely warm when I got inside, and the only time I was not driving it was just when I was moving cameras around. Um, other than that, it was pretty much just full full pin the entire time. Uh, the 1060 did great in here. Uh, I was worried about you know it kind of being buried up underneath of that driver. Maybe it would overheat. Now, granted, it's only 50 55 degrees today, uh, but you know I don't think I'll have any problems with it overall. Uh, so all in all, an uh, excellent excellent kit and. Um, a huge, huge shout out to the RC Elf. Um, without this guy, uh, this kit probably wouldn't have come about and um, I wouldn't have been able to make these videos for you guys. So huge, huge thanks to the RC Elf for helping the channel out and providing me with this awesome, awesome kit. You know, I can't, like everybody else has said in all the other videos, we can't begin to thank him enough for just the, the absolute generosity and the awesome little community he's built, built here on, on YouTube. It's awesome. So, shout out to you, Mr. Elf. Um, I really don't have anything else to say. It was an awesome kit. It was an awesome build, and I really enjoyed driving it. Um, I think once the track is up and running, uh, this versus the Nova Fox are going to be a really, really good head-to-head uh, -head battle. Um, you know, very similar, you know, size, shape somewhat weight um same power plant um i think they're going to be a good head to head when we get the track up and running but you know guys that's all i got for today i did make sure i got my griswold t-shirt on i did make sure i got the operation 11 charlie hat i did make sure that our elf made an appearance in this video and i hope you guys enjoyed it i really thank you guys for stopping by and checking it out everybody out there be happy be healthy be safe and i will catch you on the next one bye <sighs> That's a damn nice kit. I like it. You like it? I like it too. <sighs> no, they're still watching. Hold on. I'll be right back.